Good afternoon to all the participants. Shall we start, sir? Start, Mario. Okay. Good afternoon to all the participants. I, Ravi Gatti, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Bangalore. We welcome you all for the second session of the AICT sponsored short term training program SUTP under AQIS program on optimization techniques for 5G cellular networks organized by Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Bangalore, Karnataka. To brief about the first morning session, we had a keynote speaker, Dr. Suresha Sir. Principal, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Bangalore. Sir enlightened some of the key aspects of the 5G technologies with his vast research experience, which includes evolution of technologies from first generation to fifth generation, need of 5G technologies, effect of 5G on economics, major design verticals of 5G, technical expectations, energy consumptions, and optimization techniques for 5G technologies. We would like to thank once again Dr. Suresha sir for from organizing committee member for accepting our invitation and gracing this event. For the today's second session, we have Dr. Dilip Reddy Bolla, Associate Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, SVCE Bengaluru as a keynote speaker. On behalf of management, principal and head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, we welcome you sir for this event. I would like to welcome uh, Dilip Reddy sir with a brief introduction about sir. Dr. Dilip Reddy Bolla has born in an agriculture family from Sri Subha Reddy Bolla and Srimati Vijay Lakshmi Bolla. Presently sir is working as an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, SVCE Bengaluru. Sir completed his research work with focus on wireless ad hoc and cognitive radios with emphasis on design and analysis of routing protocols, spectrum management schemes to design and analysis of cognitive radio networks under esteemed guidance of Dr. Shivashankar in the year 19, 2019 from Vishweshwaraya Technological University, Karnataka. Sir completed his master's in embedded system in the year 2011 and B.Tech in electronics and communication engineering in the year 2009. Sir, has total 11 years of teaching experience and 5 years of research experience and guided several uh, B projects and master's projects. In this tenure, sir academically excellenced in achieving 100% results in ARM and embedded system, Internet of Things subjects, wireless and communication networks, digital signal processing algorithm and architecture, computer communication networks and digital communications. With respect to research activities, Sir received fund from KCST for the academic year 2018 and 19 for the project Swatch Robo One's Cleanness Identity. Sir has published 23 publications in various international journals and conferences like Inner Science, IEEE, Elsewhere, ACM. Sir received Best Paper Award for the paper entitled Wireless Monitoring of Prepaid Energy Meter in Wireless Science and Technologies Publication Bangalore, India. Further, Sir is presented as a financial co-chair, publicity chair and reviewer for IEEE conferences and active member of professional societies like Indian Society for Technical Education, associate member for the Institute of Engineers and International Association for Engineers. Sir, Currently working on the insights of 5G and Internet of Things, machine learning, advanced embedded system, and VLSI design. Sir is involved in several prestigious events like IEEE, Elsewhere, ACM conferences, workshops, seminars, development programs, and student development programs, having an ample leadership and leadership learning qualities for the furtherance of academic and research fraternity. With this, Biodata, I would like to welcome and request Dr. Dilip Reddy, sir, to take over the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ravi. Good 
Good afternoon, everyone present here. So I am Dr. Dilip Reddy Bola, Associate Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Bengaluru. Mm -hmm. Today, I am here to present 5G and IoT, the future of mobile communication. I welcome to all to the today's webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. The session on 5G and IoT, the future of mobile communication. So, coming on to, moving on to the uh, slide of uh, college about us. So, we are from Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. So, these are our team at the uh, SCC, uh, Department of EMC, and it's headed by the esteemed guidance of Dr. Shivshan Chatter. And uh, Sari is my research uh, guide who has guided me throughout the journey of research and, uh, and guiding many other scholars. And uh, Sari is an inspiring personality, very humble and down to earth. And Sari is uh, truly inspiring in front of us because of Sir, we are here and uh, we are presenting. A thank, thank you, sir, for giving an opportunity to present uh, the topic on 5G and IoT for the ACT sponsor. Thank you very much, sir. So, moving on to the agenda. So, today we are uh, discussing about uh, 5G and IoT, mm -hmm. evolution of the fifth generation. We know that it mm -hmm. came from 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, so on. Now it's uh, 5G. And then we try to see the difference of 4G and 5G. How exactly is 4G and what exactly is mm -hmm. what makes the difference between 4G and 5G? And some key concepts of uh, 5G technology. What exactly this technology is? What are the concepts in modern era? And how do we optimize that? What is the requirement of optimization in the 5G? Right? And uh, 5G expansion for IoT. Means what is the relation of 5G and IoT? 5G is different field and IoT is different field. But what exactly is connecting the 5G and IoT? That's what we're going to see the impact of it. And some features of 5G technology, mm -hmm. research focuses, advantages and applications of it, and uh, overall challenges and open issues. This is what a lot of researchers are looking at, even the students are looking at. The next 10 years, what is coming globally mm -hmm. in the market is based on this complete challenges and issues. So we're going to discuss uh, all these aspects, right? Along with the uh, future research activities. Okay, so this is the agenda of it. So moving on, uh, just briefly to tell what is the what why uh, we are seeing what exactly we are discussing, but why we are discussing about 5G and IoT. What is the requirement of the discussion of 5G and IoT? Why we need to do that? Mm -hmm. To start with this, uh, like uh, we come to know across uh, the famous uh, WhatsApp joke, right? So what was that? Uh, like usually anything when they compare or tell, they'll tell about uh, three countries they'll compare, like US, UK, and India. Correct? But have known this WhatsApp joke. So what what will happen usually in uh, UK, US, right? When they are mm -hmm. about to uh, take mm -hmm. rest or when they are about to uh, go to bed, what they'll tell? They'll tell good night. And sometimes they may tell UK good night, sweetheart, so on, they'll tell you. But what happens in India, you know that, right? They'll ask, have you locked the door? Sweetheart, have you locked the door? Or uh, have you uh, kept something in fridge? What about the tube light you have switched off? Geyser is on or off? So all these things come into the mind, right? So to stop that thinking or to stop that, the 5G is going to put a full stop uh, further. So what is that is going to do is it's going to touch virtually all the aspects of a life. What you name it, you get it. What all the things you're going to tell, you're going to be connected with the internet. So without internet, there will be nothing uh, to be controlled or to be smarter. So over 43 billion devices are going to be connected by 2023. So that's the statistics coming up from the uh, Internet of Things in July 2019. That might be much more larger scale right now. So 43 billion devices are connected by 2020, that's the estimation. It may increase still further. So that's all we need to learn about 5G and IoT and upgrade ourselves to know, uh, to know what exactly is going on in the market. So that's why 5G plays an important role along with the IoT. So which means 5G is going to open the door for the IoT. So that's what we need to do. Okay. So let us look at the overview of 5G and IoT. What exactly is 5G and what exactly is IoT? So. Uh, so many of them might have attended the morning session, excellent session in the award by Dr. Suresha sir, and uh, sir has briefed out the complete insights of uh, 5G technology and uh, 
what exactly is happening uh, globally in the 5G fields. Okay. So adding on to the input what Sarah has told, so 5G we know that G stands for a generation, so the five, the fifth generation of wireless communication. So many of them might be pursuing their research work or complete their research work in the wireless communication. So this one of the interesting fields for the upcoming future is on 5G, right? How exactly we have to evolve from 4G to 5G? You know that 4G, the fourth generation is also the other name of that is 4G LTE, so long-term evolution, 4G LTE. So the continuation of that is the 5G. So we feel like what exactly is the big deal with 5G? Why we will talk about uh, 5G, right? The big deal here is you might think that this 4G is having uh, some speed and uh, 5G is having some more speed than that. What's the big deal there to think of it and uh, why too much we are talking about 5G? So it's not just the speed, it is, it could change the world. It could change the world globally. The market, what we have now, it can be changed in another two to three years. All the industries have to adopt this 5G technology, whatever we call uh, with the help of IoT. If not, the game is going to be changed completely. The complete global game changer. You can call it as a game changer, 5G. And uh, uh, and we see that there is a lot of demand creating for the devices. Let us say, usually we may not have mobile phone with us, but it became a part and parcel of our life. Wherever we go, uh, we we look at our friends or not, we don't know, but we'll tap on our, our side to check the mobile phone is there or not. We'll just check the right hand or left hand, something is missing. What is that? Mobile phone. So mobile phone is there. रिसोर्स पर्सन लागे ना एक बार कुमार्ता है रिसोर्स पर्सन लागे ना एक बार कुमार्ता है रिसोर्स पर्सन लागे ना I think some uh, technical issues is there. Uh, just wait a minute. We apply for the inconvenience cost uh, for the packet funds. Uh, yeah. Just wait a minute. Due to some technical issues, I think uh, the resource person has been logged out. Just wait for a minute.
Yes, Dilip, sir. So slide number six. Okay, sir. Sir, you share the screen, sir. Dilip, sir, you share the screen. Sir, the power cut is in there. Now, let's just share my paper. Hello, Ravi. I'll come. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. okay. I think now you can see, sir. The lip, sir. I have shared the screen, sir. Sir, now it's okay. I can control it. It's okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Sir, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Slide number six. Yeah. Okay. So sorry for the interruption and uh, thank you, Sunil and uh, Pravigati, sir. Okay. So we are discussing about the overview of the 5G. So here we know that uh, that 5G is going to change the game. Where IoT comes into picture, really, it's a big game changer. Okay. And uh, this IoT is going to work in the back end for our 5G networks, right? And uh, we can see the evolution of 5G. So, like the morning people that have discussed the complete evolution in detail about from 1G to 5G. And one thing, one takeaway from this slide, what you have to understand here is if you see the pattern of the years, it is coming from 1980, moving on to 10 years, again 90 to 10 years, 2000, 10 years, every 10 years, the trend is changing, which means generation is changing. Who is going to change it? Which country is going to change it or which organization is going to change it? Who is going to do that? So we have something called uh, 3G partnership project. We call it as 3GPP. So through that, through that, we are going to get the approvals or we are going to get the permissions to the international mobile telecommunications. We call it as uh, IMT 2000 standard or IMT we call it as international mobile of telecommunications. So through that we get this standard. So we know that in case of 1G, in case of 1G, we got only only voice through analog data. There is no texting or thing or nothing. Only voice. And uh, to adding on to that uh, voice, we just added the text and changed that analog to digital. That became the 2G. And after that, we got three things here added up in 3G. What all the three things here are? We call it as VDV. So video, data, and voice. So which we got for 3G. And we felt that 3G is not so fast or not. Uh, uh, so great we felt and so th that way the technology has changed same features with uh, additional multimedia added to that and uh, much more higher speed and we can able to see the broadband uh, through 4G and now the game changer which we call it as 5G which will start evolving from 2020 uh, on so let us say even 4G we got in 2010s uh, but uh, it has came into real existence or real market from 2016 or 14 let us say so which means it may take some more years to evolve because none of the towers are installed, none of the infrastructure is there, there is no hardware feasibility and software equipments are not available. So immediate future, may not expect that, but uh, definitely down the line for one or two years or 2024, the 5G uh, uh, is going to emerge. So 5G, other name is called as NR. NR stands for new radio. So because we don't know how the features of that is, that's why the scientists made our name that new radio called NR. So 5G is also called as NR. So this was the complete evolution of the 5G. We know that as the lap of every 10 years, it keeps changing from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. Where uh, 4G to 5G transition, we have something called 4.5G also, which we call it as uh, Vivo LTE. Uh, so LTE we have on Vivo LTE, we have all that is uh, 4G, right? That's the evolution of uh, 5G. 
and uh, we'll look after the evolution of 5G here and after that uh, we'll go what exactly the 5G is going to what's the vision of this 5G what exactly is looking at to look at this mm -hmm. uh, complete uh, smart city we take an example where you have a private network and you have a public network and you have external broadband smart transportation you just can imagine nowadays that for example you want to book a cab or you want to uh, travel so you can just tell about to your google book a cab for me scheduled at uh, so on so fine to a block or schedule a two taxi that will take care of itself by a voice command maybe in future that's what we are expecting that and uh, the factories and the healthcare whatever whatever the field we name it the field, all the fields are getting occupied by this uh, internet of things and uh, 5g it will show an impact on public networks as well as the private networks and we connecting all these uh, complete networks to that we call it as a massive highway so what is the benefit of this 5g or iot what do we get sir? what what if we get what the benefits we get uh, 5g we get so what the benefit of that is let us see an example of that or how to understand that so more data uh, makes better decisions for example a friend ask you that uh, let's go to a movie so now the movies are not possible just a uh, friend ask you let's watch the movie on amazon prime or something then you cannot take a decision immediately or spontaneously you will ask which movie which date what time how much is that who is that acting you will ask a lot of inputs from there which means the more the inputs you have the better the decision you can take so which means that the data is being managed based on the decisions is being managed based on the input the more the input you have the decisions are that better how do you understand what is that uh, effect on us is for example if you look at the first point more data means better decisions to understand that if you have your refrigerator at home that is a normal refrigerator let us think that by 2025 or 30 we'll have a smart refrigerator that will send you a notice and that will send you the uh, message stating that okay this uh, uh, so and so food has been going to expire by so and so date so before that you can consume it or before that you can use it or let us say you ordered the milk carton packets and you are trying to keep it in your fridge or Third packet or milk packet or bread butter whatever it is. So it will tell us that based on the decisions, it will tell us that uh, what's happening on, what is going on. So please take a decision based on that. That is the first thing. Second thing is what ability to track and monitor things. The one thing we bothered about that is privacy. So everything is tracked. Everyone is monitored. You see. Even uh, government of India tells us that you download the RBI Setu app. Uh, we feel like bothered about that privacy and tracking. But it has to be. downloaded and used right so it becomes like everything is tracked so imagine that how it will be imagine that uh, you you want you are uh, not there in your home you are traveling uh, somewhere for example the next day you don't want the newspaper to be on your doorstep so it will send automatic notification when the door door is locked nobody is there in home no need you don't need the newspaper it may assume that and tell that message to the concern and it may tell that person who is going to give you the green leaf for a meal for a cord whatever so it will keep updating that in a in your day to day life i'm talking only about ourselves i'm not talking in this slide about the industrial things what is happening what is the benefit for us we are region uh, that what second thing what we're talking about and uh, lightening the workload and automation you feel like if you take it by by sheet and uh, stretch it out with the pen you have a lot of works to be done so which some things can be done automatically and some things can be done uh, by yourself so where the automation things which are possible can be replaced by this iot with help of the 5g as a tool right and uh, increases efficiency by saving money and uh, resources how do we save the money so how do we save the money is for example now it, uh, let us say your complete home it became a smart home the moment you enter the room the light is on and depending on your conditions and settings the fan can be on ac can be on or off ac can adjust itself based on the temperature what you have so everything is being controlled based on the requirements and based on the inputs so in that way if you are not there in the room the light will be automatically off right so this way we can save a lot of money in the automation if you look at only a, a smart home talk about so let us say next is better quality of life how do we improve the quality of life so we all wear the fit bands for the uh, wrist and we just walk or jog and we try to see what is my heart rate what is my humidity uh, what is my uh, hydration what is happening on body temperature everything 
just put the smart uh, Fitbit and it will tell you about the body temperature. Whenever you feel like you are not comfortable, you put the temperature of the body. It, it gives a lot of sense to you. So, which means that a better quality of life will be provided based on the 5G and IoT in the upcoming futures. That's about the benefit what we have about the And then further moving on to the difference between uh, the difference between 5G and 4G. So, till now we have seen something about uh, uh, 5G, what benefits we get or what is the advantages we get. So, look at the difference of 4G and 5G. Still, the transition is going on from 4G to 5G. Usually, uh, the latency is 10 milliseconds in case of uh, 4G. The latency is one less than 1 millisecond in case of 5G. What exactly is latency? If, for example, you got a verb that switch on the fan, the mother has told you, the father has told you. Whom do you be the priority and whom do you do it faster? You got a call from unknown number, you got a call from a known number. Which means how fast you're going to respond to the input given, that's the latency. If I open something in a browser, I'm taking 10 milliseconds to just uh, catch it up what exactly it is. Whereas I'm taking here 1 million than 1 millisecond. So where does it impact? We'll say an example of that. That's the latency that is 10 times reduced in 5G. Whereas in, if you call, take off data traffic, I'm talking about per month data traffic where, where we have used 1 GB per month. Now we came for, we didn't imagine even, we came for 1 point GB per, per day. Whereas previously 1 GB per month, 1 GB per month we are getting, we are astonished and we are shocked. 1 GB per month, what to do? Still 500 MB will be uh, wasted or unused. Now we think of the traffic of 1.5 GB to 1 GB. Uh, we, are, we ourselves personally are using in our home. I'm not talking about Wi-Fi, only the talk, uh, talking about the mobile, what we are consuming. If you add the Wi-Fi, still more you are going to be consuming. So the data traffic, what we have here, what is 7.2 exabytes. If you understand what exabyte it is, exabyte is called as EB, shortly. It is 10 power 18 bytes, which means 1000 power 6 bytes. It can count the zeros, number of that, that kind of number of uh, bytes it is. Is also called 1000 petabytes or 1 million terabytes. Not 1 terabyte, we know it is 1 to 4 GB. It's talking about 1 million terabytes or 1 billion gigabytes. That much of data traffic is generated in terms of 4G. If you imagine that, that in terms of uh, 5G here, 7 into how much? 5, 6, 7. Seven times it is increasing. Data traffic is approximately increased by seven times in by 2021 in terms of data traffic for 4G and 5G. Which means it can handle that much of traffic even. Or else the data is getting congested and the spectrum is not available. These problems we have in 4G in future. That's why the migration will be going on to the 5G. And peak data rates, if you look at that 4G and 5G, it is one GB per second. It may come approximately here. 20 mm. GB per second. That's the difference of 4G and 5G. And spectrum availability to handle all these things, to increase data to handle, obviously the spectrum has to uh, play an important role. How the spectrum will play an important role here is, if you look at the spectral availability, the spectral availability is usually is used by uh, 3 kilo to 6, uh, 6 gigahertz. Let us say we are using only still up to 3 gigahertz in the 4G. Now it's been spread over to the 30 gigahertz available spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas from 24 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz, what we have, we are going to use the mm -hmm. license spectrum. And uh, for uh, from 6 gigahertz to 24 gigahertz are used for unlicensed spectrum availability, spectrum band for the case of 5G. And uh, connection density. Mm -hmm. So what is the connection density? Connection density is going on 1,000 connections, 1,000 Thousand thousand connections, not thousand connections, thousand thousand connections per kilometer square, which means that if you take a two dimensional plot of x and y axis of 100 meter by 100 meter, in that we may have a thousand uh, a thousand connections in the case of 4G, the density of that, but the maximum density I'm talking about. And then we can expect a 1 million connections per kilometer square in terms of 5G. So that's the huge difference about the 4G and 5G. So the 4G may not uh, say evolve or go up immediately. It will be there other four to five years. Let us see and to see an example or a case study as uh, a video. So what you can do is I recommend every one of you uh, to use your headphones to enhance the audio quality. And uh, second thing is uh, 
please make sure that the YouTube will dynamically change the streaming bandwidth to the HD video. So if it's getting blurred or anything like that, we'll share it personally to you. You can go through that. This has been inspired uh, and made the difference clearly about 4G and 5G. So look at this video, uh, what I'm going to play now. You can understand clearly. Yeah, I think you all are using headphones now and you can enhance the audio and you can understand what is happening. The difference between 4G and I know that some of them will be feeling difficult while streaming it, so YouTube will automatically adjust its uh, uh, settings. You don't need to worry about that, and please do use the headphones to uh, get the better quality of audio. insights of that so let us see now uh, what are the main three pillars of 5g if you look at the pyramid here or if you look at the triangle here we have three dimensions of this so if you see the top dimension the throughput should be very high so that's why mm -hmm. it is at the top higher throughput higher throughput which means enhanced mobile broadband is also called as e for enhanced mobile broadband emb wherever we use the keyword emb which means that Enhanced mobile broadband is one of the key pillar of the 5G. And if you look at that next further, uh, the power power should be consumed less. The so power should be less. We call it as low power. That being used to IoT, that is second pillar, low power. That is also called the other way main part of that is massive machine type communication. We call this as uh, EMBB for high throughput, and we call it as MMPC, which means massive machine type communication. Whenever we are trying to communicate a machine to machine, uh, we don't need too much of power requirement. The power requirement to be very less. So that is uh, one of the features of the 5G MMPC, so which is massive machine type 
communications. Okay, and moving on to the third pillar for low latency, it's called as URLLC. URLLC stands for ultra reliable and low latency communication, where you may say that it is reliable and it should have a very low latency. Whenever you are trying to experience, for example, in future about self-driving car, an autonomous car, in that case, we need to rely on it. We should believe that. And the latency should be very minimum. The latency is such a way that even the flash of second or milliseconds, it has to take the decision. So the low latency uh, communications and uh, ultra reliable with that about smart cars. If you look at the overview of this, this has been proposed by IMT. So I already told about that IMT, what exactly is IMT. So what is that IMT? It is uh, International Mobile Telecommunication, the standard of IMT 2000, International mm -hmm. Mobile Telecommunication. Through that, we can understand here, uh, to look, look at the smart city. Smart city may require low power consumption, throughput may be low, no problem. And uh, wherever you see this mobile phone where we have here, the center of the pyramid, where we need the throughput also, we need low power consumption, we may need the latency. That's what figured out at the approximate center of the uh, triangle. Mm -hmm. A smart home building, smart home building should have a nominal power consumption and uh, it needs to have uh, a moderate uh, throughput. Okay, and if you look at this, lot of things what is coming up in future, 3D video. We are seeing the movies nowadays in 2D, Some, sometimes we see in 3D, but now whatever we get is 3D and ultra HD screens, UHD screens. And we may use that for high throughput we require for that. And uh, we may see that uh, ultra HD videos on mobile itself with a, a better quality. And work to play with the cloud, augmented reality, industrial automation, and uh, mission critical applications where it has to take the decisions faster and self-driving cars. So all these things. So these are the three main pillars of the 5G proposed by IEMT. The ultimate uh, takeaway from this is we need three words wherever in future we get these three words, EMBB, MMTC, URLLC. So to make it short to do, EMBB is enhanced mobile broadband, and uh, MMTC is massive machine type communications, and URLLC, which is ultra reliable and low latency communication. If anyone asks you what is there, what is the great thing in the 5G, so these three keywords are the thing what has been evolved, okay? And ultimately, power should be low, throughput should be high, latency should be low. So this is a takeaway from this slide. And uh, we see that uh, the company perspective, so this is the approximate statistics proposed by the Qualcomm company, uh, where we're moving on to digital economy, and uh, we are estimating 13.2 trillion in the global economy value by 2035, not immediately, maybe 15 years down the line, 13.2 trillion. So we know that 1 trillion is how much? Around 1 lakh crores. 1 lakh crores into 13 times, it is around 13.2 lakh crores. The market is going to expand in terms of uh, these fields. We may not do agriculture directly, but we may do with Russian agriculture. We may do the construction and mining. We may get around uh, 1,000 to 1 billion of the investments coming up. And uh, the education nowadays completely is digitized because of this era, uh, because of this pandemic situation. Or else uh, we are expecting that to be much more digitized by 2035 and connected the uh, healthcare. The healthcare also may be automated, all the data records, all the temperature records, whatever it's connected to cloud and uh, process. And we get the better experience of mobile, maybe in terms of gaming or maybe in terms of all the HP videos, whatever. And the manufacturing industry becomes smarter, smart manufacturing industry. And the retail sector also becomes intelligent. And we know that uh, a smart city is going on. So these are the different sectors where the IoT and the 5G is going to uh, evolve and uh, capture the market. So this all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields are going to be affected uh, with the help of this convention or this proposed uh, 5G, right? So we know that this 5G is uh, evolving rapidly and it helps us in meeting all the I
we feel the difference in the experience so what is that we feel difference in the experience here is uh, if you look at the left side screen if you look at the left side screen here we have something called as uh, current how we are doing using cloud centric intelligence we have a cloud we put the data into the cloud based on the cloud data the inputs will take the action there may be some intelligence but not exactly the uh, artificial intelligence will not happen so that's why we may have some latency there around uh, say 100 seconds or 100 milliseconds whatever now the blue colored one if you see there so this is we are adding up to the cloud what cloud we have same cloud we are using same infrastructure we are adding on to that 5g technology and where in the 5g technology we are adding up to the artificial intelligence ai we are adding up that becomes not uh, cloud centric it becomes distributed intelligence it's based upon the economic and performance trade off of the iot and use cases let us see this much more clearly so uh, if you understand this distributed uh, functionality uh, we can share the resources effectively we can use the openness we can enhance the concurrency we can improve the scalability fault tolerance we can improve on and transparency so all these factors are being improved in distributed functionality so uh, the left side one is the longer latency and the 5g latency we have we are trying to connect with help of 5g the on device and the uh, cloud so it becomes uh, intelligent and these are the things where it's going to affect uh, its effects on the precision of the ultra low latency if you look at that uh, for example if you are trying to book a cab or if you are trying to book an auto through ola or uber whatever sometimes they will not come to the correct position because the gps is not spinning properly with this 5g technology it can spin up to 0.2 cm accuracy the accuracy of this is approximate the precision of this around 0.2 cm is what that much accurate it can be uh, in the 5g that's the predicted so we see how exactly it works on and uh, it is an intelligent assisted cloud the cloud we are intelligence to that it becomes intelligent cloud now and we have better enhanced the xr experience xr experience is like uh, augmented reality ai ar or uh, vr or uh, extreme uh, whatever we call it so that's x, x for extreme reality what we won't believe that but it's possible that extreme reality and we don't know what extra new services we may get and it affects on the cloud computing the storage of data and uh, wherever we feel sometimes the games are not coming up properly the latency is reduced so the games now is being possible to do it with low latency complete gaming world will change because of this 5g technology and uh, uh, this along with the user interfaces of voice it may change the real world so this is the scenario and to look at that 5g nr we call it as because i told you before nr stands for a new radio nr stands for a new radio so 5g nr is capable of doing all these things as you have seen the three pillars of uh, 5g so enhanced mobile broadband massive critical services and massive iot so these are the three fields what we have uh, affecting on uh, 5g and uh, 5g nr okay and if you see the scale down uh, like uh, it's increasing the uh, 10 times end to end latency and 10 times throughput is improved and three times spectral efficiency the data traffic is increased by 100 times as well as the network efficiency also increased by 100 times and the connection density by 10 times so that the diverse uh, spectrum we have here lower bands mid bands and high bands also all three bands are available and along with this three bands the bands can be licensed bands or unlicensed bands or shared bands so the challenge is that here a lot of research work will be uh, going on in sector management so managing the licensed bands to unlicensed bands and now we got distributed uh, environment or distributed functionality so through that we got data sharing or the resource sharing so that's why the spectrum also can be shared that is uh, diverse spectrum and the diverse deployments so we have to connect to the 4g and we have to connect to the different 5g and 5g can be connected to millimeter wave to demo a different it is completely diverse deployment you cannot expect what exactly is coming and now uh, how exactly this 5g will impact our digital life what is happening of the impact of this so uh, the impact of that is uh, let us see the video what the impact of uh, 5g and let us come back to the slides let us see here what the impact of 5G on it will be like. The one minute video, how do that 5G is going to impact on us every day like.
So what is the takeaway from this video here is the, the signal delay is 5G is now reduced less than 1 millisecond. Whereas in case of 4G it is 10 millisecond and in 3G it is 100 millisecond. And uh, the Ericsson company has tested uh, the speeds of this 5G and we got the record uh, speed at 170 kilometers per hour approximately. So let us see the video and how the mobility of that, how the handoff, handoff is taking place. Mm -hmm. So look at that. So this is what uh, they have tested in uh, by Ericsson company, SK Telecom and uh, BMW Korea unit. They have tested this uh, for the speed. So this is what the trial setup uh, done by the Ericsson company. So while establishing connection here in 5G, we may use uh, they may use different uh, techniques they are using. So one of the techniques they are using is millimeter wave. Other technique is the BMO. Third technique is the 3D beam forming. The fourth one is uh, based on energy consumption. And like that. So here they use the beam forming technique. Uh, so this is So as for their testing, what they got, they achieved is around 170 uh, kilometers per hour speed. They are able to achieve around 3 to 4 uh, Gbps uh, per one ticket. So that's the speed what uh, they have tested uh, the 5G. And uh, yeah, there are some more technicalities. Uh, let us see the insights of this uh, 5G. So we know that I told you uh, in the beginning that there is something called PDPP. So we are going to set up the standard. It's called as a, a 3G a, a partnership project, 3G partnership project, 3 g They have different release versions. Let us say from version 9, release 9, they're packing up. So this uh, release 15, what they have released, that release 15 is called as 5G. It's a new logo of the 5G. It's a blue colored, a three blue colored uh, color type picture. NR indicates new radio, 5G NR. The new logo, like we have a 4G LTE, right? For the tagline. So for 5G, we have a 5G NR. So the release 15 gives you the 5G. And after that, they made some some specifications they added up that's called release 16. That was almost completed by 720. They released this also. Our trials are going on with release 17. And finally, release 18 will come up by 2020 and 26. So that's why it's waiting for uh, with this release completion, we may get that market and completely into the market. So what are the difference of this uh, release 15 and 16? We'll see that in the next slide. But as of now, if you look at this here, release uh, 16, what they have did is, uh, initially they are used only for the common man how to use it. But now how the industry to use that suggested by release 16. In 5G, how a person can use a mobile or mobile communication or uh, whatever personal purposes, that's about your release 15. That's why we call it as EMDD. What is EMDD? Then, Enhanced, enhanced mobile broadband EMDB focus. They just focused on the release 15, focused only on enhancing the mobile broadband. Whereas as release 16, they are focusing on how do we expand this 5G to the industry. Okay. And release 17, they focus on how do we use that for the long time uh, expansion. The so long run, how are all things to be done? What are the drawbacks they have to overcome? That they will see the release 17. So that's how the driving 5G and everything. And uh, with, the, with the help of this 5G NR, what all things are possible here is, uh, the release 15 have the flexible slot based framework, the scalable numerology, the advanced coding for the channel, and massive memo, and uh, mobile millimeter wave communication. So I told you already three important factors. One is what? Uh, the first one, what is millimeter wave? 
second one is massive minimum and third one we call it as 3d beam forming the fourth one is uh, uh, small cells and fifth one is uh, full duplex response so these five factors are going to change the way the 5g is going to evolve okay if you look at here the license bands we talked about uh, three different license bands shared and uh, shared and licensed and licensed so we are using all the license bands and high precision as i told you like uh, google can uh, fix out the accuracy by around 2 meters or at a say 2 cm the accuracy level what we have for 5g and uh, mission critical decision so very important decisions can be taken care by using ai so mission critical decision So it can take the decisions by 99.9999 percent accurate, which means almost 100 percent accurate. But machines are prone to error, so that's why they are floating around 99.9999 percent mission critical decision taking ability and uh, advanced power saving and mobility. If we look about advanced power saving, if you want to transmit 100 or let us say 1000 bits using 4G, you may take one millijoule of energy. But whereas that is reduced by 0.01 Millijoules of energy to transmit thousand bits. That's what the advanced power saving mobility of the 5G is. In case of release 16, we're talking about release 16. So these are the things what we have. Uh, they are added up in the release 16. So we have release 16, 16, 16 already is out, and uh, 17 is going on. 17, 18, 19 are going on. The price is going on for 17 and 18 years. So right now, release 16, we can call that as 5G. Release 16, we call it as uh, 5G NR. Release 17 and 18, they are trying to uh, name that for 5G Lite. First, initially they are given the name 5G Lite, uh, and later on they have changed to 5G Lite GHC, 5G Lite. So that's what they are named for the next release 16 and 17. Then release 16, what they are trying to do is they are trying to focus on how do we expand for the uh, outdoor applications or how do we expand for the industrial ex experiences using three techniques by multi-cell positioning. Using RTP and uh, angle of arrival and time difference of arrival. So these three they are focusing on in case of multi-cell positioning, and in case of single-cell positioning they are focusing on the radius-based RTP. RTP means round uh, trip time we call it as RTP. So these are the new evolution techniques what they are using for release sixteen. So what they understood that is uh, meeting initial accuracy requirements of three meter indoor and ten meter outdoor at eighty percent of the time. They are able to meet the requirement. At 80% of the time, for the release 16. For release 17, they are focused on three main things. Three main things. What are the things? Are capacity, latency, and accuracy. So, centimeter level accuracy, as we discussed already, you can see this slide here, meeting absolute accuracy requirements of down to 0.2 meters. So, 0.2 meters is what the accuracy it can figure it out. And uh, lower latency, as we have seen that they are putting one millisecond. So let us see that uh, it's around less than 10 milliseconds guarantee we get it in real time. So then we will get it in release 17 with the reduced position latency of around 10 milliseconds and uh, higher capacity uh, because we have IoT coming up uh, evolving that completely. A lot of devices will come up. A lot of devices will come up. You have to scale and you have to optimize that capacity is improved here. And we see 5G 5G NR example with a boundless uh, XR experience. XR experience can be augmented reality experience or virtual reality experience, whatever it is. So here to do here is 5G NR is going to do is let us say somebody is playing the game online or let us somebody is playing the game laptop or uh, television or smart TV whatever. Now they have given up this uh, headphones or headset or head mount here. Using this head mount, it has the inbuilt cloud. It is In, in functionality, which is also called video presentation of the lab. For a, let us say a smart TV. It's only we can see a confined region. Let us say to but with the mount or display, we can see uh, the complete uh, view will be changed. Crossing the framework that's been implemented in 5G now, and uh, traffic awareness and uh, system enhancements. They are trying to focus on this. Uh, boundless experiences. So you can uh, the gaming becomes uh, the uh, the future. On gaming, we're going to change the world in terms of uh, view or in terms of latency. So that's about optimization. 
and uh, this 5g nr technology as i told you already these four aspects what they're focusing on reduce power consumption uh, nowadays if you charge mobile phone in the morning let us say by afternoon or evening it will drain off it will look off the power bank or it will look off the mobile phone charger or what exactly that, that problem can be overcome by using this 5g nr and this complexity the complexity is uh, minimized to some extent and it becomes uh, very easy it's also called we call it as a mb iot it's a narrow band iot which is narrow band iot the low power and uh, wide area network to call it as lp wan so in that we can use this uh, low device complexity and increase net efficiency now somebody has for you the network issue you may have you are not able to listen carefully or you are not able to listen properly the audio is not clear you know, the problem hello how are you where are you i am not able to hear you that kind of problems not be there by you we have complete network efficiency if somebody is telling that i cannot able to hear you in 5g that absolutely uh, uh, wrong so because in 5g there is no uh, network problems so if call is connected that's how the 5g is going to be and uh, coverage optimism in building or in uh, wherever wherever you are at different position to be able to connect so coverage issues will not be that much in case of 5g that's what they are looking at so how good it come which is that's what we are seeing same thing uh, how it is so these things will expand uh, in the pre gpp release 17 so they are going to add these features and enhance these features let us say by release uh, 17 so already we have 15 we discussed about 5g and release 16 they have added that 5g nr and they working on these these four factors to improve on by release 17 and if you look at the evolution of this uh, to meet the expansion So at least 13, 14, 15. So 15 where we have got the 5G, and 16 is already evolved. It's, it's okay. 17, 18 is yet to come. So what they are trying to do here is they are trying to tell like uh, uh, the Denar light or Mitra uh, Mayoti, which Denar light is being used from here this time. Same thing. We just uh, put up in a different way based on the performance. The performance uh, is based on this NB IoT. NB IoT is called here as the narrow band IoT. What to do? Is used in uh, low power W wide area network. Whereas here it is EMTC, uh, EMTC, which is a massive machine type communication. So for that, because release 17 and 18, they are not focusing on uh, the human usage. They are focusing on the industrial usage. So that's the power. Where the IoT will evolve much more strongly. That's what EMTC is for a massive machine type communication. So that's what they're focusing on for release 17 and release 18 of 5G. And if you look at this, uh, the logo of the 5G, there are you see this kind of logo will be there or this kind of things are there. First thing is the invention, uh, where they are connecting from one end to other end, end to end. How they are inventing, what these things they are doing, what the vision they have, how do they commercialize with the low power battery and low latency. And uh, what is the proof of the concept? What they are proposing? What is the proof of that? And bring a standard for that to connect end to end device and trial it. If these things are working out, invention, vision, commercialization, proof of concept, standardization, and trials. If these are working out, the 5G will come the uh, real new radio. Okay. Until then, until then, we cannot tell that it's going on an invention stage or vision stage or commercialization stage. So all all of that can change. So invent it. Proof of concept, standardize, trial, commercialize, and achieve the vision. So these are round fifty degree cycle from invention to proof to standardize, trial, and commercialization. It goes on. So this one of the case study taken from the inspiration of the Qualcomm. So their project they are doing it here like this. So first step they are trying to use the industry R and D, and the second thing they are doing prototyping as we have seen here by right? invention. Uh, proof of concept and all those things. So that they are trying to show it up here. Advanced system simulators they use it. So just they have to prove that what is happening is right or wrong. And next they go for uh, collaboration with trials and then cutting edge solution. They'll come up with. These are the five steps what they have. You have a vision. To start with here, let us say we have a vision. You invent something. You find the proof for that. You do the standardization of that. You do trial. You do commercialization. So this cycle. So one, two. Three, four, five steps are there here. These five steps are shown here. First thing is we have a vision. With the vision, what we are trying to do, we are trying to see the proof of concept. After that, standardize. So these are the five different steps what they are trying to do. Here they are trying to 
test strip simulators so they are planning to collaborate with other uh, industries and finally developing the product so product shown here is uh, so Qualcomm uh, Smart Dragon that can be used for the commercialized purpose so that the system approach they are trying to use in the invention in the industry standard and uh, this is what it is so the central cloud we have how do we expand the IoT so this uh, so we expand with the help of public network or private network whatever the network it is and we use the edge cloud here to the private network and the edge cloud here for the cloud augmented reality or let us say artificial intelligence AI we can use these kind of approaches to the traditional cloud and then we connect it to the public network and we can connect it to the Snapdragon uh, this is the inspiration taken from the Qualcomm Snapdragon how they are trying to do and uh, what are the three key factors the 5G is going to bring up here as I told you three things what you have to remember here is 5G is a flexible framework and it is having enhanced privacy and uh, it is enhancing the security so these two things we will see, discuss all these two things as a case study yeah. and then end-to-end uh, -end, uh, data management end-to-end -end data, -end data management means what there are three things who are involved in end-to-end data management one is data ownership and uh, data governance and uh, data provenance data ownership is we we buy a smart gadget or we buy a fitbit we are data owners and uh, data governance who has to monitor that the cloud or whatever data provenance who is going to give the authenticity or verify the records all that is data provenance so these three things plays a vital role in the end-to-end -end partnership of data how we generate it and how do we store it and how do we reuse it so that's what they are uh, uh, we are trying to give an example here's an example or a case study of uh, uh, data driven end-to-end -end case study let us say we have a owner let us say the owner can be a patient, for example. We are taking an example of a health mounting system. The health mounting system, uh, we are trying to find out the patient behavior or the uh, owner of the device. One of the device should tell that, that I'm owner of that. For example, you buy a new phone, you have to claim that you are the owner. How do you claim? You register with your name, it becomes yours. So you have to register first with the ownership management. So once you register that, owner of the device is a patient, it registers. So after that, it has to manage with the medical wearable device it has to connect the medical wearable device to the ownership management so we connect to that and after that uh, once we connect to that we are trying to store all the data in the data management the data management we have data from the device data from the wearable device and uh, the what is that data change to whatever the features we are getting added up all that is being stored in the data management so what we are doing with this data the data management we are processing the data to the doctor from the data management. We are giving the data to the consumers of data. Who are consumers of data in healthcare? Doctors. If, and the doctor cannot access the data until unless the access is being permitted by the patients. So access permission is again, then the data management so that the doctor can uh, see the data and update the data or uh, give an So that's how the health management system is going on in terms of uh, Okay, but finally, the main research focus on these two topics to talk about end to end uh, of propagation of uh, 5G and IoT. So, these are the key points where you can note down. One of the key points is security hardening how to improve the security in ownership management. That can be one of the research area. Remote device uh, uh, attestation how do you author authorize that? That is uh, your device, it is accessed in remote location. That's one of the ownership management problem. A single device with multiple owners. Single device with multiple owners. You may have one mobile phone. Is it possible to have two to three Google Pay accounts or two to three Paytm accounts? So that's what. How do we how do we find out that? Group management of devices with single owners. Group management of devices with single owners. You have four mobile phones. All four mobile phones, you have to install your Google Pay or install your uh, Paytm or whatever it is. So different problems are there. How do we solve those problems in the upcoming era? It's ownership management. And in case of data management, how to identify it's you? You are logging on your Gmail to your laptop, it's also fine. If somebody is logging on with the same ID and password in some other continent, it's not, if they are providing some security. But here, uh, how do we provide that in terms of data identification? Zero knowledge proof and uh, secure multi path uh, computation, proof of data processing. So, all these are the research focus on the 5G data management. And now, if you look at the interesting part of the 5G, so let us say, if suppose I want to download a movie, which is of two hours long, 
let us say the movie name is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. If they want to download that movie, I can fly to New York to La Sydney, including the check-in time. It will take 26 hours. That much time it will take in 3G, where they are approximately getting a speed of 384 kbps. With that speed, they are taking 26 hours. And then we moved on to 4G. 4G, we moved on. If you want to download the same movie, it's taking six minutes. The full speed of 4G, the maximum speed we're taking up. You may get over around one, uh, one Gbps we are playing about, or 100 Mbps to take up an average. So we can have a quick run for a mile, and then we can see some status updates on the Facebook. That's what's possible if we are using 4G. And in case of 5G, what to do? 3.6 seconds, what can we do? So just click it, so we'll get downloaded. I'm talking about the Ultra HD movie, which is of uh, two hours duration. It will be downloaded in 3.6 seconds. So what can be done in that time? Nothing. So the time is absolutely. By the time you click it, and just you have to wait. So the data will be downloaded by the type of file. And some tests have been done by different uh, telephone vendors in the US, uh, UDNT, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon. So these statistics, uh, if you look at that, worst case condition, they are taken up in 4G and uh, 5G. They are getting the 5G is performing better than uh, 4G, absolutely, that will perform better. And they are getting approximately these pieces of uh, data in terms of AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and very common. And what are the advantages of 5G technology and applications of 5G technology? We know already, uh, just to make it uh, precise and uh, clear, the advantages of this 5G are it's uh, high speed, we get a very good speed, and high capacity, how many devices we get it into the market in IoT, all the devices can accommodate, it can accommodate, and low cost per bit so to transmit the data. And advantages is multimedia, voice, and internet. Any multimedia file we can transmit it. This all is there in 4G also, but with enhanced speed, it is possible. And uh, service portability we can uh, provide service portability with the help of 5G and high uploading and downloading speed. Obviously, we know that high resolution, bi directional, large bandwidth. So these are the advantages. And when it comes to applications, we can monitor the weather and location. We it will change the way the education is now completely. It will change the educational field. So it will predict the natural disasters much more uh, faster and much more quickly so the world, you know, and planets and galaxy. That is possible with the help of 5G. Just shortly about that 5G. Now, uh, let us see now this, let us say it's a smart city. So how do where exactly this uh, 5G will be deployed here. So 5G will be deployed here. Is this. So look at this uh, usually normal uh, city view. So look at this, if you see this view, uh, we have the wind fans, the turbines or wind fans, whatever it is. So these wind fans are uh, producing energy and uh, to the smart grid. And we have something distributed generating system backup. So through that, we may send that uh, energy to the wind fans or wind fans to back. So whatever it is, is possible to a private network and uh, load balancing techniques through smart energy load management. So, and then we control energy distribution center dynamically and uh, upcoming future cars are electric cars. So we can do that to electric cars for charging and we can see the utility unit, how much it is charged, how much it is has to be charged faster. And then uh, uh, we detect the usage of this in key cars and uh, normal apps. And then we see any faults occurring in the sensor, anything happening in the smart lighting, all these can be monitored in the uh, energy grid, uh, what we have in the distributed uh, environment. And uh, if you look at the logistics, what we have, we try to order something now, we're going to get that in three days. So if the 5G is evolving to IoT, the errors are very less, and then we can get it very fast, and the goods will be uh, transported very easily. So well, how the 5G is used here, if you have a private network in the 5G, we do have the autonomous trucks which will take care by itself. The movement of vehicles will be taken care by itself. And uh, it's something that uh, we are trying to connect to public network. We have a callback. And then we try to see the logistics in that, what we have. And we can uh, do the surveillance of that through ultra HD surveillance camera. And uh, who is coming in, who is going out, we can monitor the using monitoring sensor. And uh, uh, the fridge main test uh, upload, we can do it, what we have in the ship. And then site operations we can access. Autonomously, we can handle the containers. So moving the containers up and down, autonomously we can do it. And then uh, we can see AR guiding the repairs, what is happening in the AR. With guiding the repairs, we can see it. 
to discover what is happening in the logistics. So look at the market trend. If you look at the market trend, uh, we are in around 2020. So almost the uh, usage of 5G is very nominal. It's very close to zero or one, maybe two two percentage. If you see the down the line of 20, uh, 25, five years down the line, even the 5G will be 15 percent only, but the 4G gets saturated around the usage of 59 percent approximately. And 3G will be dropped down to 20 percentage from 30, and usage of uh, uh, which is of year 2G is dropped down from around 40 percentage in 2016 because of 4G evolution that has dropped and the 4G has evolved. So that's what the cross point here in 2017. You can see this 2017, this has fallen down, this has been raised up, and this has catched up 50 percent more than that, and this has catched up more than 60 percentage in 2023. Okay, so it goes on in that uh, manner. So still, we can tell like. By 2025, only 15 percentage of uh, uh, the connections will be with the type of 5G. But still, the 4G supports the 5G hand to hand. You can achieve wonder with the type of 5G. And this is a global trend what we have. Even there is some places where uh, they don't have any evolution of that. Already, the evolution is started in uh, uh, US and Canada, of 2019. And in India, we can see that that uh, blue color by 2020 we are expecting. But still, we don't know how good it is and how fast it is. And, uh, and by 2025, definitely, it is going to occupy a lot of space in the map. Okay. So these are the things what is happening on. So to discuss about a, a small story here uh, about this. Uh, so whoever captures the market in 5G, they are going to be game changers. So what happened? Uh, like uh, China, they are being much more. A, a, a true story it is, but how much true it is, I don't know. Whether I will be on that. So China is uh, doing the research on 5G and they are telling also 6G. They already finished 5G technique and they are going on to 6G how it should be. Because the market, whatever amount we have, is being pumped up to the market and the complete scenario will be changed. So China is claiming that they have developed the 5G and they are about to launch the 5G devices. Where? In US. The US government has banned that the devices to launch. Or else, uh, by this time, the 5G devices have been launched by Hawaii technology, Hawaii, you know, Hawaii mobile phone tech, so those are the manufacturers from China. They are going to manufacture the 5G uh, headphone, uh, say mobile phones. So that has been stopped because the trade war is going on between China and US, you know that. Uh, the 4G war, we know US has an edge now. The 5G war, if whoever has the edge will definitely take the upfront lead in the global market. That's why they are struggling to get the lead in the upfront market. So before we just uh, conclude here, we have something uh, uh, interesting on uh, Intel, what Intel is doing with IoT. So let us see what Intel is doing on the type of IoT. Intel is doing on the type of IoT. Challenges, uh, which will be an important slide for you for the upcoming future. Look at the challenges what we have. 
So we have a device to device communication. We have got a challenge here is how to discover the device. The first challenge. Look at this here. We have challenges, solutions, and open issues. Look at challenges here. You can take any one of the challenge as your research problem for your master's degree, or for your doctoral degree, or for your uh, BTEC project. Or project uh, any of the projects you can uh, do with this uh, things. Device discovery, mode of selection. What mode we should use for selection? Uh, there are different modes. Solutions also we have here, and you can go through this. But there's a lot more to discuss on this. And then, uh, what is the resource to be used? Whether we are going to use interference management or power control. So that resource, how to control and mobility. When you're talking about mobility, you're talking about QoS or you're talking about uh, uh, device to device assistance. So that we talked about. And security and privacy also plays a vital role here. We should uh, do the authentication, key agreement, uh, security capability, all that from security and privacy. And the economic aspects, what we have is non cooperation solutions, cooperation solutions, option based solutions. So, all this are the challenges we have. The solutions also have been given here. And the open issues, what we have also mentioned here. So, based on this, whichever field you are interested and whichever uh, topic you are inspired or whichever topic you are connected, you can take that and take it forward for your research work or for your uh, degrees or, uh, or your passionate work carried out on your research. So one of the important coming up from this uh, device discovery becomes very important for the and the mobility. So these two are the very important factors going on. And of course, uh, we cannot uh, put anyone down that security and privacy. Everything is important based on one by one, which has to be evolved. So let us see how the uh, future is going to be in terms of uh, 5G. These are challenges. And uh, open issues we have on uh, new waveform generation, active antennas, bandwidth aggregation, and the network uh, uh, and then uh, dynamic spectrum allocation and beam forming and beam tracking. As I told you already, the five things what we have to focus on is uh, millimeter waves, massive beam forming, uh, 3D beam forming, small tails, and full duplex reciprocity. The simulation platforms for uh, using 5G is any version based on 2019 or higher. We can support for the 5G platform and you can add on the tool 5G uh, for the communication toolbox and uh, NS3. We call it as Arena 4G and uh, you can also use some work of that uh, 5G Lina. You can use that for NS3. And the Omnit Plus Plus you can use for the uh, simulated package for the working on 5G technologies. Okay. So then finally to come to the conclusion here and the summary of that. So we have release 15 now. The release 15 is called as EMBB. I told you already. EMBB stands for Enhanced the Mobile uh, uh, Broadband. So that is that release 15. And 16, 17 are in the version, the continuous process. So once 18, 19, 20, beyond, whatever we call that, it's called as 6G. So 6G, whatever we have, we have uh, next uh, technology loop or uh, capabilities and effectiveness can be improved upon. And then uh, we have historically 10 years between the generations. So we can expect that for 2030 or maybe the full thing by 2035. So this is the complete view of the summary of the uh, 5G technology. Okay, this about that. And then uh, I thank you everyone for giving an opportunity and uh, giving me patience to me and uh, uh, enlightening me and learning some things. And because of you, uh, I have learned a lot of things. I thank Dr. Shushneka sir, especially for giving an opportunity. And the entire organizing team of the Department of ENC, they worked a lot and uh, worked hard for doing this event. Santos sir, Rajan, uh, Ravi Gatti, Sunil sir, and everyone. Purna madam, Kesho sir. There are a lot of people who are behind it working hard to make it possible. So make use of this event as best as possible. Thank you very much. And these are some of the websites what I report from Intel, Qualcomm, and uh, let us say uh, Wind, uh, Wind Driver and Ericsson. These are the references. And thank you, everyone. And if you have any uh, thing to be discussed upon or any, any other issues, please let me know. Anything to be discussed. So that's it from my side. and. Uh, so anything you want me to repeat or anything? Thank you, sir. Uh, it was a very informative session on the 5G and IoT, uh, the future of mobile communication, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, emphasized on real effects of the 5G technologies uh, with the practical uh, scenarios along with IoT applications and the impact of 5G in our daily life as discussed, uh, the different release versions of the cellular technologies, 
the expansion of 5G with IoT. And the session was very active and it was very lively, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so we once again would like to thank Dr. Dilip, sir, uh, from the organizing committee for accepting our invitation and uh, gracing the event, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, so any queries from the participants? Yes, please. If there is no any more it means uh, we would like to thank all the participants for your response and support for this event. Uh, we kindly request your presence toward this uh, SCTP. Uh, just for tomorrow's uh, agenda is in the morning sessions, uh, we have a keynote speaker, Dr. Hemesh Kori, uh, IET Distinguished Fellow, Retired Technical Director, Alcatel Lucent Technologies, uh, former chairman of India. Uh, on a research topic called as technologies driving 5G and uh, optimization using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. In the afternoon session, we have uh, uh, Dr. Jijesh JJ, Associate Professor, Department of UNC SVC Bengaluru, on a research topic called as emerging research opportunities in uh, 5G wireless networks. Uh, so we request once again all the participants. Uh, and we kindly request you to subscribe our YouTube channel, SCTP ECE SVC, to join for the tomorrow's morning session at uh, 10 a.m. We would like to conclude the uh, given of the AICT sponsored short term training program on uh, optimization techniques of 5G cellular networks. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, stay home, stay safe. Thank you. And uh, the feedback form has been uh, displayed. It is uh, displayed in the comment section also. We request all the participants to give the feedback. So once, again, so once again, I request all the participants, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be getting uh, notifications and please click on the notification icon. So once the session starts, you'll get a notification so that you can join the session on time. So those past depends who have missed out, please give you a valuable feedback. The feedback form has been uh, it is given in the comment section and it is also displayed in the banner. Mm -hmm.